What's up guys? All right, so today we're gonna be going over my new daily driver. I just purchased this thing last week. I think it was last week, week and a half ago. And I've done some odds and ends to it, some maintenance stuff, I'll go over that. And kind of what you can expect if you buy one of these and you have to do those items. Um, we'll go over like the features and how it looks, but this will be my new daily. It'll be taking me to do the videos or the other videos that you see on this channel. Um, it'll be taking me on road trips and stuff like that that you see on this channel, just my daily activities. And this quite possibly could be one of the best vehicles I have ever purchased. Uh, this thing is just rock solid. The, the minute I drove it, I was like, I, I've got to own this vehicle. But without further ado, let me introduce you to my new 2014 Lexus IS 250 F Sport. Wait till you see the leather interior in this car. Uh, it only has 77,500 miles on it, but the interior looks like it has two miles on it. Let me get you off the tripod, take you around the vehicle. Okay guys, here it is. Now I wanna tell you, when these first come out, I did not love these grills. That's the first thing, I, elephant in room, I wanna throw this out here. Um, also, it's not clean, it's done nothing but rain here, and it's gonna do nothing but rain and snow over the next like week, so I didn't really clean it up good, I did spray it off, so please look over that. But, I didn't love these grills when they first come out, but the front end of this car is growing on me very fast this thing looks mean from the front end now that 2.5 liter six cylinder only has like 204 horsepower so it's not going to give you um just a, a crap ton of horsepower and torque it's not the fastest thing in the world my old camry that i have actually already sold the red one that you've seen on the channel had the 3.5 liter v6 in it it would outrun this but i just had this thing on the highway the other day and i got 36.4 miles to the gallon. Around town, I'm getting around 23 to 24 ish uh, just on daily activities, and that is pretty amazing. One thing I do like is these wheels. Uh, the lady did say she got out and had maybe a few too many and had curbed them, and that is a shame because uh, I love these. These things are amazing. I may try to get these refinished, but almost every wheel has some curb rash on it. Uh, I did have to put tires on it. The tires were pretty worn out on the front, especially. So I put Bridgestone, Potenza, I forget which one of these, RE980AS, the All Seasons. These are uh, offset. You do have a wider wheel in the back than the front. So you will not be able to rotate it if you get the F Sport, which you can see the F Sport badge right there. Um, this car is just beautiful. It is just, in my opinion, anyway, it is just beautiful. I wanted one of these when I bought the Camry and uh, I couldn't find one. So uh, when I found this one, I went ahead and purchased it and uh, have not looked back since. The Camry only took a couple days. I didn't even really put it up for sale. Uh, just word of mouth sold it in just a couple of days. Look at this car. Look at this, look at those wheels. It's almost like a black chrome wheel. You can see some more curb rash right there. That's just a shame because this is one of the only factory wheels I've ever seen that I was just in, in awe about. And I think these things are well, well over a thousand dollars, even if you can find them used. I did also have to put front brakes and rotors on it. The rotors had a big lip on it where at the top, I guess where they've been worn. Um, so there was like a huge lip right there. So I did have to put um, new rotors and brakes on the front. The back was still good. Also had to do a dry belt. It has some cracks in it. I did the um, uh, air, uh, air filter and the cabin air filter. All that um, was around 18 or $1,900 for the wheel or tires and everything. And then I did do the uh, Lexus OEM. Uh, all weather floor mats and those were 180 ish dollars off amazon but they are the oem ones um, but just look at this interior so there's a little bit of scuffing right here i guess where probably rings hit it but that's not bad i want you to see the seat uh, look how bolstered these seats are look how bolstered the bottom is this big drop now look how there is no wear on the seat there is no cracking there is nothing. I don't know what kind of leather Lexus uses, but there is nothing. With 77,000 miles on these seats, there is nothing. 
they've not been reupholstered, uh, anything like that. Uh, it's just a testament to what kind of leather that Lexus actually uses in these vehicles. Um, on the S Sports, I believe you can get the, like this reddish maroonish interior or black. Uh, mine has the red. I didn't think I'd like that, but I gotta tell you, that is also growing on me. All right, let's check out the interior. It is a little hard to get in and out of because I try not to hit those seats as much as possible. But in the center, right here, you have your center console. You can see it's big enough to fit some sunglasses and some stuff like that that I have in here. You do have your power ports right here for charging your phone. You actually get a couple of cup holders and they're actually out of the way. Uh, I set my arm right here and you can see I don't hit those. Some cars have cup holders in the way, especially like some older Mustangs. They put them like right here near the shifter, which is crazy, uh, but they actually put these out of the way and uh, they're big enough to actually hold um, pretty good sized drinks. If we check out the glove compartment over here, you can see it's kind of small. It does come with a little tray here. I took that out to be able to fit a few more items in here. Uh, but it's not the biggest glove box in the world. This shifter is awesome. It's very positive and it shifts like a normal Toyota, like my Tundra does, or, you know, like the Camry did, but it's got a more positive feel. I don't know how to explain that. It just has a more positive feel. If you've ever felt one of these, uh, IS 250 or 350, and I don't know if it's just an F sport or not. Um, but they're just more positive. You have your dial here for your suspension and your drive modes, sport, uh, push it for normal or eco. I just drive it in normal. And that 36 mile of the gallon I was getting on the highway was in normal mode. You have traction control off and snow. I've not tried the snow yet. I will probably drive my truck in the snow. This is rear wheel drive only, so it's probably not gonna get driven in the snow. This is a cool little feature here that I'll show you in a minute and you have your menu modes and uh, your home button. I'll show you what that does here in a minute as well. Um, you have your heated seats, you have your climate control and your radio functions here, which also have radio functions on the steering wheel, as long as like some other modes, this does something really cool to this car. You can see it has paddle shifters and then you have your big screen up here. Something I love about this car that I have not got used to yet is this clock. I think this is so classy when they put analog clocks in vehicles. But I still look up here to this big screen to see what time it is. Um, somebody like scratched this screen or something. I don't know, it might rub off. I don't know what that is. Um, but there is some like marks down here that you can kind of see. That's the only flaw really in the vehicle. I don't, I don't know if that's a normal thing, um, but you can't really see it when it's on. But I've not got used to this clock yet. I still look up there to see what time it is and there's no time digitally on this screen. Um, it's all right here. Um, let's turn this thing on. Also, you can see the F Sport logo here, your cruise control, just like all other Toyotas. So uh, let's start this thing or just kind of turn it on so I can kind of show you what this all looks like. You can see the Lexus pops up there as it comes up, Lexus Inform. All this is coming on, gives you your caution. And one thing I wish it would change is it has navigation that comes up here. I'm not gonna show you the navigation because um, it kind of gives my location out. But navigation comes up, I'll show you the bottom. It kind of comes up on both screens. If you hit this home button right here, your navigation will come up, but then on the right-hand side, your radio comes up. And I wish it came up like that to begin with because I don't want navigation on both sides. I'd like to have the BLC, I'm playing on the radio, um, and not navigation on both sides. You do have a push button start right here. And then right here, let me show you this. When this lights up, it has one of the coolest dashes. Look how this dash looks right here. Now I told you I'd show you what these buttons do. If you push this button, it slides over electronically and then gives you a bunch more information over here on the side. You can go through these with this button right here or these buttons and these buttons up here. We'll take you through all the, all the different things over here. Let me start it up and I'll show you what it has. You have to start it to see it. Um, you can see right there. And if we scroll over using these knobs right here, you can see the different things. I don't have the music on, so it won't do it. No messages, different settings. If you push down, it'll give you more information as well. Um, but I have to have some of this stuff on to be able to see it like the radio. We can't turn the radio on. Um, and it gives you like your coolant temperature up here, your gas moves down here, 
your outside temperature moves up here. And if you hit this button again, you can see it moves back and gives you the normal display, which is where the, I leave it. And you can also see it has 77,507 miles. And I would like to say, when I called the Lexus dealership, my wife had another issue with a key fob on her Lexus. She keep, the, the new NX350 key fobs keep going dead. I, I don't know what the problem is. Like every two weeks, we've got to replace a battery in them. It's nuts. Even the little credit card one, I don't know. But I called them yesterday talking about that. And... um that I was telling them that I'd bought this car and the guy at the dealership said the 2.5 liter engine, especially with this transmission paired up to it will last forever. He said, these things just run forever. He said, it's one of the best engines uh, that Toyota's ever made along with one of the best transmissions and them paired up. It's just such a great engine transmission pairing and i want to tell you right now wait for the drive video that will be later i don't want this video to be too long so i'll do a separate drive video but this thing shifts smoother than any vehicle i've ever owned in my life you can't even feel it changing gears it is nuts how smooth this thing drives it's, it's just crazy and it's so quiet in here that it's going to get me in trouble because you don't realize how fast you're actually going. Let's get back to some of the stuff in the dash. Okay, one thing I want to show you here is how you change the temperature. You push on these. It's, you can slide it up or slide it down. It's on both sides. But you don't actually have knobs or buttons. You actually just have little sliders. And they work very well. I've not had any issues with it at all. It works really well. And uh, I, I kind of like that. I kind of like it better than buttons, actually, just because it's a nice little touch. Now, if we go back over to the door over here, all four windows are power. You have your locks for your windows and your door locks, and you have your window adjustments here. You do have like a cup holder down here. This is pretty big uh, storage compartment right here, pretty big storage area. Of course, your odometer, tripometer, it does have blind spot monitoring, your trunk pop and your hood pop with your emergency brake. And one last thing, it does have a sunroof. And then up here, you have, you know, your how you control your lights, your sunroof controls, and then like an SOS button that I've never had. Um, then you do have some controls up here on your mirror as well. Okay, if we get out of the vehicle and we go to the back, you can see there's no room. <laughs> I mean, there's literally like no room. There's a little storage compartment here. I don't pull out on them. That way they don't stretch or anything like that. But there's not a lot of room. I did get the mat back here as well uh, but you can see that these seats are in just as good a condition as the rest of the seats and look at this carpet the carpet looks like it's never even been stepped on and you have um rear air if we pull down right here you do have an armrest if you push this button right here you do have cup holders in the rear um in the back it's just normal stuff there's no sunshade like the camry had or anything like that um, but again uh, no place down here for storage uh, but everything is just amazing on this car it's been very very well taken care of it just needs a good cleaning which we will do that to access your um, gas uh, nozzle here where you fill it up you actually um, just push on that premium unleaded fuel only. This needs a good cleaning too. Uh, I did put premium. A lot of people say Lexus don't require that, but obviously uh, they do. If we go back to the trunk, there's a little button right here that you push to open it. If we look inside the trunk, that is popped up. Um, you can see right here that it does have the Lexus mat in the back. Uh, since the tires were so worn, um, I did throw this in the back. It's just a little compressor. Uh, I don't really need it now, I guess, because it has, you know, the uh, new tires on it. Uh, they even had the Lexus first aid kit with it, and it does have a spare tire underneath this, which I'm not gonna pull up because that popped up there a minute ago. Uh, but you can see there's ample room in there, and hopefully I can fit a couple of sets of golf clubs in there because I'll be taking this thing on a golf trip here in a little bit. If we come around to the other side, more of the same see there's no storage in here but everything has been taken care of very meticulously there again now you got some storage right here uh, but uh everything looks amazing throughout here uh nothing wrong with the seats at all it looks like this seat's never even been set in take truth about it and then again the carpet 
just looks great. I do need to clean this a little bit more, but this car was pretty dirty on the inside when I got it. It took me about an hour to clean the hair out of it. The lady that owned this had real long hair and she had some floor mats that came up real high on the sides and the hair had got down in those floor mats. You can see a little bit of the hair still left, um, but it took me almost an hour to clean all the hair out of it. So that will conclude the walk around the tour of the Lexus IS 250. Um, Let's finish the video, then we'll go on a test drive for another video. All right, guys. Now, I do want to tell you one thing. When you go to check out one of these vehicles, this generation, this model years throughout these years had one problem that this vehicle is actually suffering from as well. When you hit the lock button, if you don't hear a beep, that means all your doors are not locked. Um, so the driver's side door had the door lock actuator replaced actually in December. My two back doors don't always lock, which means those actuators are failing. And I had it happen once on the driver door. Um, so if it's not beeping or you don't hear it beep when you, when you hit the lock button, you can actually um, may have to replace those, those actuators. I'll do a video and show you all how to replace those. It's not the easiest thing in the world from what I've seen, and they're not the cheapest. If you buy the factory ones, which I will, because I like the way the door shut, um, it'll probably cost you somewhere around $280 per actuator from the dealer. You might be able to find them a little cheaper online. You can buy aftermarket ones way cheaper, but if you buy the factory ones, it'll cost you almost $300 per door. And that is a common failure. The Toyo or the Lexus, the Lexus dealership told me that those things fail on a failure rate of about once every eight to 10 years. So if it's about 10 years old, you can expect to have to be replacing those fairly soon. Uh, that did not deter me from buying the vehicle. Um, I love this vehicle. It was in great shape. The, the interior was great shape. So if I had to replace a few minor things um, on the vehicle, or I had to like put some tires and brakes on it, I got a good deal on it. Use stuff like that to your advantage when you're negotiating the price, because that is expense that you're going to pay fairly quickly because I did all this stuff within the first week that I owned it. And the door lock actuators, I'm gonna go ahead and replace all three of them so I don't have an issue with it since the driver's side's already been done. From Lexus, I got a stack of papers this thick of where they'd had oil changes and stuff done at the dealership. So I had you know, good documentation with the car as well. And Carfax is a good place to look at that because I pulled a Carfax on it. They showed 27 history reports on the vehicle as well. Um, so that's how I found out that the, the driver's side had been changed. But if you do hit that button and it doesn't lock, just know you're in it for 500 and some dollars if you don't do it yourself. I think it was like $580 is what the receipt said. But for now, this is my new daily driver. Uh, I love this car. Again, from the driving video, whenever I do it, you're gonna see that this thing is just an amazing driving machine and why I think it's probably the best vehicle I may have ever purchased in my life, even with 77,000 miles on it. I appreciate y'all watching this video. If you have any comments, leave them in the comment section below. I love you guys. We'll see you next time.